Welcome to our online service. We are so glad to have you with us. My name is Nathan and I'm the lead pastor here at Orange Baptist Church. We would love to keep blessing you and one of the key ways you can partner with us is by sharing and liking and subscribing to this channel uh, and sharing this content through a whole multitude of platforms uh, so that we might see other people blessed in the good news of Jesus. Another key way of partnering with us is that if you are blessed by this, that you might consider partnering with us financially here uh, at the work of Orange Baptist Church. And then one of the key ways to do that is through our online giving platform and the details for that are below in the description. We wanna be praying for you and we want you to connect with us. So if you need prayer at any point along the way, please shoot us an email at prayer at orangebaptistchurch.org.au and a team of people are waiting to pray with you and for you. And if you are ever in the local vicinity of Orange in New South Wales, please drop in, come and see us on a Sunday morning. We would love to worship with you and to celebrate Jesus together. Be blessed. All glory, majesty, power and authority are yours. We worship you for all that you are, for all that you have done and for all that you continue to do. May we always remember that because of your deep love for us, you gave your life on the cross, that we might be reconciled to God and have the richness of your grace and forgiveness. Praise you, Father God, for the triumphant resurrection of Jesus, proving for all time that you are the Messiah. Lord, you know our hearts and yet you love us just as we are. We are thankful for the Holy Spirit, who is always with us, teaching and drawing us to you. You are the one unchanging constant in our lives. We draw near to you with sincere hearts, fully trusting you, who are faithful to all your promises. We are thankful that nothing can ever separate us from your love and that you hold us fast. Our identity and purpose are in you and you meet all our needs. We ask that Gary would continue in his recovery after surgery, becoming stronger each day. Would you open doors for Baz to go back into Condobolus and Orange High Schools? Give him opportunities to get alongside the young people, <coughs> demonstrating your love and acceptance. Guide him by the Holy Spirit in every conversation that many would be drawn to Jesus through his ministry. Bless the children in Kids Church today that they would know the love of Jesus and would grow in him. Guide the youth as they read, question and discover your truth and learn to live in your love for them. Praise you for your presence in life groups as they meet this week. Draw many more to join a life group to be blessed by doing life together, sharing in your word, caring and supporting one another. Set our hearts on things above where Christ is seated on his throne. As we look forward to the day when we will be in the presence of God face to face, would you put your priorities into our daily lives, your desires in our hearts, your sacrificial love into our serving and actions, and the peace of God will rule in our hearts and make us thankful. Amen. The reading today is from Philippians chapter 1 verse 27 to chapter 2, verse 4. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, 
being one in the spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish, <coughs> selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. Father, I thank you for your immense goodness to us, your immense goodness in sending your Son, our Lord Jesus, who has not only saved us, but who is our gracious King. Lord, it is a privilege to be a part of a community of faith that loves you and values your word. Lord, as I speak this morning, I ask that through your spirit that you might deal graciously with me, that you might deal graciously with us and that you might use me to share more of your word, uh, that the words in which we read and have heard read for us out of Philippians might aliven our hearts as we approach a new year together. May we then learn the lessons that you would have us learn here. May we be bold and courageous to love and to serve one another as we love and serve you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. What kind of church do you want? <clears throat> you ever thought about that? What kind of church do you want? Do you want a kind of church that is um, just, uh, just doctrinal? Uh, that is just teaching, teaching, teaching. Uh, I hope so. But I hope that that's not all that you want. Uh, I, ho I hope you want out of church a, a place in which we can connect with one another and serve one another. I hope that's not all you want. I, ho I hope that you are here to love and to serve Jesus and to grow in him. But I hope that you do want to grow together in community. <clears throat> because the reality is... If we don't want all of Jesus and we don't want all of his community, then we have to ask ourselves the question that are we living out the kind of Christianity that we are called to in the Scriptures? In the last couple of years, life has been chaotic. And if there is one absolute certainty coming into 2022 is that it's going to be full of uncertainty. It will be, again, we don't want it to be that way, but the reality is our world is chaotic. And I don't know what, what 2022 holds, and neither do you. But I know this, that Christ is king and he's still calling for us to cling to him in community with each other so that we might continue to stand firm as one body in Christ Jesus. That's what I know to be true. And I know it to be true because it is laid out for us in the entirety of the Scriptures. And in particular, I think, Philippians chapter, the back end of chapter 1 and the beginnings of chapter 2. There's this immense call for us to live out this faith that we have in Christ Jesus. And as we live it out, we cling to one another. As we were kind of thinking through this year and, and the theme in which God was calling for us to kind of focus on at the beginning of the year, it became pretty obvious that it was around one. One, one in heart, one in mind, one in purpose, one in spirit. That we were to be connected together in Christ Jesus, being able to stand in him together, shoulder to shoulder no matter what is happening around us, no matter what happens in our personal lives, no matter what happens in the world at large. And so I asked that question, what kind of a church do you want? Because in reality, the only way for you to get the church that you want is that you do the things that is church, because the church are, is us. It's not this building we together are the church. We are the expression of God's local community living out his kingdom in this world around us. Philippians helps us to define, I think, what our purpose needs to be heading into 2022. 
And I hope that you allow your hearts and your minds to be open. Paul writes to this little church in Philippi, a church that he himself planted, a church that he himself loves immensely, that they have grown together in the midst of this, a church in which has supported Paul in the ministry that God has given him, and a church that has gone through some struggles, and there's some internal struggles, and there's a whole bunch of external pressures. And it's in light of this chaotic world that Paul writes this in chapter 1, verse 27. He says this, whatever happens, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Paul, Paul writes as a, as, a, as a father figure, he writes to them and he says, whatever happens, whatever carnage comes your way, no matter what pressures on the outside world that fall upon you, no matter the circumstances, no matter the, the fights and the arguments that are clearly taking place here in the church in Philippi, he says, in, in, all of that, regardless of all of that, you conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And what's interesting is, is that kind of statement, conduct yourselves in a manner, that there's this kind of civil overtones inside of that. There's a call to be a good citizen. So it's kind of whatever happens, be a good citizen worthy of the gospel of Christ. Here, the citizenship uh, in the first century was, was something that was a, 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 a virtue that was to be lauded. For you to be a good citizen was to you to be a good person. And your responsibilities as a citizen of Rome uh, and, and Philippi is a part of the Roman Empire at the time. For you to be a good citizen meant that you didn't rock the boat. You didn't rock the boat. You paid homage to Caesar. You went to all of the pagan festivals. You paid your taxes. You raised your kids. You were a good person. Yeah, you'd never put too much pressure on. And all of a sudden here, Paul says, conduct yourselves, have been good citizens, but it isn't necessarily to a citizen of Rome. He says, conduct yourselves, so again, that civil overturns, in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. In other words, we are to live as citizens, not of the world around us, but citizens whose king is Jesus, not Caesar. And in chapter 3, verse 20, we are told that we are to be citizens of the kingdom of heaven. This is what Paul is saying. No matter what happens externally, conduct yourselves, live out faithful citizenship to Jesus and Jesus alone. That's not to say that we aren't to, to kind of be good citizens in the world around us. It's not to say that we don't have responsibilities, but our allegiance is what is being questioned. Are you, are you put your allegiance to the world around you or will you conduct yourselves as a citizen of the kingdom of God where your allegiance is clearly seen towards Jesus? Are you with me? This is fundamental because as citizens of this kingdom of God, this unity in Christ means that we will have unity together, which is precisely why Paul says that whether I come to you or I see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. What's interesting to me is that Paul uses the plural, that you all stand together in the gospel, not that you as an individual, but this is a corporate statement. And this flies in the face of our current world. I know that, and I know it flies in the face of our traditional kind of formats of Christianity that basically says you're a consumer and it's about you as an individual, and I know that because I've been in the church for a long time now too and I've seen it and I, and, and I know that it's true because I still play out that same game where it's still about me. But it's not. Because of the gospel, our allegiance has shifted and when our allegiance shifts, our purpose shifts. 
And our purpose is no longer to live in the world and to live as, a, as if we are only pleasing ourselves. But now we live in Christ Jesus because of the gospel. We live to serve him. And in serving him, we serve our other brothers and sisters in Christ. Because it's not just about us getting to the finishing line. It's about us collectively walking faithfully, marching another day closer to the celestial city where we collectively stand before God. It's not an individual pursuit. Paul is calling for us collectively to live out as citizens of the kingdom of God, aliens in the world around us. And when we do that, when we stand together in Christ, when we live out our ministry together in Christ, where we love and we serve one another in Christ, no matter the pressure that is built upon us, we stand as a testimony of the power of the gospel of Christ. Which is why Paul says this in verse 28, uh, in the second half of verse 27. Striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you, this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that uh, by God. Paul calls for them, regardless on the pressures that have been put around you, and, and clearly here to the church in Philippi, the pressures were both happening internally and externally. And it was complicated. Because to follow Christ, for often for people in this, in this context, it was to... Be a part of your, to, to move away from your own family. Knowing that for you to follow Jesus meant that they would reject you. And yet we're still called to stand together. Because as we stand together, it stands as a testimony that our God reigns. And that the gospel is powerful and it's effective. That Jesus makes a difference. That our hearts and our minds are secure in him. This is fundamental to our faith. Fundamental. And so I, I don't know what kind of pressures that will come this year. I don't know if lockdowns are going to be happening. I, I know that in the next six months we're going to be in and out. People are going to get sick and be locked down for seven days. But how do we express our love in the midst of this? How do we continue to genuinely fight for biblical Christianity in this world around us? How do we keep giving expression of faithfulness to Jesus in the world around us? Well, I know it begins with us doing it together. We are better together. And when we are together and we have one mind and one heart and one spirit and one purpose, we are far more effective in the kingdom of God together than we are as little lone rangers. 2022 presents an incredible opportunity for us to demonstrate to this world that Jesus makes a difference, that he is good and that his love is extraordinary. And he wants to show it to the people of Orange through his church. But the only way for us to do that is that we stand shoulder to shoulder, striving together, as Paul says, not being frightened so that we might show the beauty of our salvation. This is important for us, particularly as we kick off a new year in ministry. Paul goes further on. He says, therefore, if you have any encouragement, any encouragement at all from being united with Christ, if you have any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then there's an implication of that. So, so for us, 
if any of us have received any encouragement at all from being united with Christ, that we find comfort in the fact that we have been saved, that God loves us and that God has chosen to leave the throne room of heaven to fight the fight that we couldn't win, the fight against Satan and sin and death and that he reigns on high. If you find any encouragement, though I'm not asking you to be overwhelmed by it. Paul doesn't say if you have been overwhelmed by, any, by the encouragement that you've been united with Christ. He's not saying if, he goes, if you find any encouragement, even a speckle that somehow deep in your soul there's this moment in which you find some kind of encouragement that Christ has redeemed you, he has saved you, that he is king. Or even further than that, if you find any comfort from his love, the, the, the knowledge that, that no matter what happens, Christ will not forsake us nor abandon us and that he loves us and that his, his death is effective for us and that he wants to be with us and wants a deepening relationship. Again, not if you've been overwhelmed by this love. It doesn't have to be this exuding, bubbling over. But if you've had any kind of uh, comfort out of his love, if there is any comf- uh, common sharing in the Spirit, if you know the Holy Spirit, you've experienced his power at any point along the way, again, not in ecstatic kind of ways, but there's sure and solid knowledge that God's presence is with you now. Or even further than that, if there's any tenderness and compassion if you've experienced any tenderness and compassion through Christ's people at any point along the way, again, I'm not saying that it needs to be perfect because it will never be, but if there has been any at any point along the way, if you can say, yes, I've experienced even a small amount of encouragement from being united with Christ, if I have comfort because of his love at any point along the way, if I have any uh, common sharing because of the Spirit, if I've experienced any tenderness or compassion, then this next statement is for you. If you've said yes, even as a skerrick at any of those statements, then this is for you. Then make my joy complete, Paul says, by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Paul calls on them, so have you experienced anything in the gospel at all, even a skerrick, to make my joy complete, Make my joy complete by being one. One. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, gee, Paul, <laughs> bit on yourself, are you? Sitting there going, you know, make your joy complete. What, what are you talking about? It's, it's not like that. It's like, it's like a husband who decides to, to not go out with his mates and to miss the football, and to spend time and take his wife out for dinner. And the wife looks at him and she says, why did you do that? Why did you reject all of those good things and just have dinner with me? And he says, because, sweetheart, um, I, I love you more than anything. And it's a real joy to me uh, to spend time with you. To which she replied, it's always about you, isn't it? <laughs> it's just daft, right? Paul, Paul saying, if there's any... If, if there's any kind of prevalence, if there's any kind of joy that, that, that I have in planting this church and, and, and sharing in Jesus with you, if, if you've experienced any of that, then, then make it overflow. Overflow, make it bubble out and exude by being what? One, being of the same mind, being of the same love, being one in spirit. And being one in mind. Here, what we have is being like-minded. That isn't to say that we have to all think the same things. It doesn't mean that we all have to agree on every secondary point of theology and doctrine. It doesn't mean that we all have to like exactly the same music. But what it does mean is that we have the same mind where the gospel is our focus. That Jesus is sufficient and that we want to pursue him. Uh, Further than that, he says, having the same love. And and what is this love? It's the gospel love. 
where we show value and purpose and tenderness and care for one another, just as God has done for us. That's what we're called to, to be one in mind, to be centered on the gospel, to be in agreement on the primaries, and to love one another deeply, to care for one another, to provide for one another, to sustain one another. Even in those moments when our minds are struggling in our own faith, do you, you know that? You know those times where you just find yourselves in that, in that darker period of time and you're questioning the reality of God and, and, and you're struggling to, to hold on to faith. And it's the brothers and sisters around us who gather around us, who encourage us, who pray with us, who keep us going. That, that is like a cool drink on a blisteringly hot day. That love that says, man, I'll walk with you. I, I will stand with you. I will care for you. Because that's what our king has done for us. And, and I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. And so I'm going to live a little differently. I'm going to take his word a little more seriously. And he says, being one in spirit, where we seek to live fullness, not just in our head, not just in our heart, but in our very being. And again, and out of one mind. It's probably better translated in one purpose. One direction with the same goal. And you know what that goal needs to be? The glory of Jesus. You know, as we head into 2022, this isn't about the glory of Orange Baptist Church. Who cares? Who cares? Like, I love being a part of this community, but this isn't about us. This isn't about whether we grow. This isn't about, this isn't about whether our name is in light or not. Who cares? The very purpose in which we exist is to, to enjoy God and to glorify him collectively. That's the chief end of man. That is our very purpose as we've been created, to enjoy God and to glorify him forever. That's what we're called to. And we need to do it together. You've got this theme here. For us to be one, it means that as individuals, we come collectively. And when we come collectively, we seek one another's good, our ultimate good. Not our own individual good. If we pursue our own individual good, what will happen is, is we will become a million different people pushing in, one, in, in our own different directions. And we will be torn asunder kind of reminds me of, the, of this incredible uh, point in our history in around 1913. Uh, and there was two exact uh, expeditions taking place, one out of Canada heading north to the Arctic and the other heading south um, uh, to the Antarctic, where Wilhelma Stephenson was taking the team north and Ernest Shackleton was taking the team south. I watched a documentary on this just again a few weeks ago. And what was really interesting is to, is to look at the, these two almost parallel kind of stories where both men, both Stephenson and also Shackleton, are trying to reach the Polars. And um, Stephenson, who in the north, he just, he put together the best crew that he could and, and it was all about the goal. It was all about just his, his name in lights getting to the Arctic. That was his purpose. And sure enough, difficulty struck and the ice crushed in and closed in on their boat, on the car look. And as it closed in on the car look, decisions needed to be made. And Stephenson made decisions for himself. His purpose and his goal was to see his name glorified. It was his purpose. He wanted all the comfort, all the glory. And as the bitterness of cold took over and as fear rose and as people were struggling for food, do you know what Stephenson did? He went out hunting on his own. And as he went out hunting on his own, the crew descended into utter chaos and they fought with one another and they were stealing from one another and they were lying from one another and the community fell apart. And in the end, every one of them died. Not one of the individuals who set foot onto the car look to head to the Arctic survived. Because it was all about individuals. 
But on the opposite end, what we see with Ernest Shackleton, and we, for, for those of us who have studied history or you've been to school, you, you know this story. Ernest Shackleton found the same struggles as his counterpart did in the north, where they got caught in the ice. And again, the ice closed in on the boat, crushing the boat. But in every point along the way, Shackleton was able to pull the men together where they decided to fight and love and to serve one another. The goal was not to reach the polar. The goal was that each of them would make it home and that they would do everything they could so that each one of them could make it home. They banded together, they encouraged one another and when Shackleton took a small boat trying to reach rescue, they cried as they waved him off with a crew of small people and they again banded together fighting for survival so they would all make it home. And because of their collective approach, every one of them made it home. What ship are we sailing on? What ship are we sailing on? Are you just an individual doing your job? Or is it a place in which we bandy together and we encourage one another and we fight together and we love one another and we serve together? We have of one heart and one mind of the same love, being of the same spirit with the same purpose, that each of us would make it home. Where we would make it home to our king. Is that our goal? It must be. It must be for us in Jesus. Which is why Paul says, all the, sorry, um, for here in Philippians 2, that make my joy complete, being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit, one in mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Do you know how you find out the interests and needs of another? You ask them. You eat with them. You do life together. You pray together. You meet each other's friends. You understand the pressures. You serve one another. This isn't to be about us. This isn't to be about you. This isn't a place to consume. This is a place to belong where we pursue the best for one another. The best not in the world, the best in Christ Jesus. So as we head into 2022, what kind of a church do you want? What kind of a church are you going to be? I want to make it home. And I want to make it home with you. So what are you going to do? Are you going to invest? Serve? Care? Be part of community? Or are you going to go north on your own? Let me pray. Lord, you have made us for community. But the world tells us that we're all individuals. And that is true, that you have made us as individuals, that you have gifted us individually, but it's for the corporate good. Lord, I, I pray the same prayer that Paul prayed for the Philippians, that we would stand firm in the one spirit, that we would strive together for the one faith of you, our Lord Jesus, that we would be like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in purpose. 
Lord, help us not to serve out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But rather, Lord, do a work in us that we might humbly value others above ourselves. Lifting each other up and doing so as a testimony of what it means to live as citizen of the kingdom of God. This year, have your way in me. Have your way in us. And do extraordinary things for the glory of your name, I pray. In Jesus, amen. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare your outliving home. Your to be